Life is not a roadmap. It's a relationship. We'll note that tonight when we delve into Acts chapter 25. Paul's facing a new governor. There is a new sheriff in town tonight. But no fear for Paul because of who he believes in and no fear for us. Pastor Mark Kinsley here from my office here at the Pikes Peak Park Baptist Church, Colorado Springs, looking into the face of a beautiful woman named Laura. Hi, Laura. Hello. How are you doing? Sometimes you just need to be on this side of the camera. That that way everybody will smile and their eyes will lighten up, right? It's great to have all of you this evening. I've so, certainly enjoyed our journey through Acts we have several chapters to go, chapter 25, 26, 27, 28, four more chapters. And then you say, Pastor, then where are we going? Well, I think we'll just follow what I'm doing on Sunday mornings here at the church. We will step right into the book of Romans, the most extraordinary letter Paul ever wrote. And we'll be there oh, whenever we get through Acts. But it's good to have you tonight. I hope you're doing well. Uh, continue to pray for... Uh, for Debbie's family, uh, her brother's in very poor health and um, is has entered into hospice, as I understand. Pray for Janice. I got to talk with her this week on the phone, and she would uh, really appreciate your continued prayers. We're going to have a wonderful Sunday. This Sunday, we're having a business meeting. One of the business items is to have the church affirm um, Tim... Right as a brand new deacon. Isn't that great? And uh, that's going to be this Sunday. And we're having a catered meal. Now, this is really amazing. For a Baptist church, you're not to put, to bring anything this Sunday, just yourself and your appetite. And I asked, I tried to get this out of Shelly today. What is on the menu? Who is catering this? Her lips were sealed. She wouldn't. She, Laura, she wouldn't let out a peep. So I don't know what it is, but it's going to be good. So come enjoy that this coming Lord's Day. Um, it's going to be a great time. We continue a series through 2 Timothy, getting close to the end of that book. Just a few more sermons to go. But plan to be a part of that if you can. I, I hope you're doing well. Let me pray for you. Lord, thank you for the privilege to pray for those <coughs> who are watching tonight. Thank you for their faith, their love for you, their love for Laura and me. We're grateful for that. And I pray your blessings on their lives and their homes, that they would be filled with the presence of the Lord. Whatever it is they're going through, they'd feel your comfort and totally trust in your will and your way and your provision. We do pray for Debbie's brother, uh, Tom and Debbie, uh, for Debbie's brother, Donald, we pray that your will, as it unfolds in his life, would cause him to embrace faith in Christ. Pray for Janice that you'd grant her physical healing. For others who are going through physical uh, discomfort, we ask that you'd grant them healing. I think of the uh, the Robins, uh, Dale and Christy, who are displaced because of a sewer backup. I pray that that would be remedied soon and they could move back to their house soon. And Lord, in these perilous times, help us to keep looking up, to have faith, to believe that you are working out all things for good to those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. Bless this church in this city that we serve in. Draw people to Jesus and let the church grow for the glory of God is my prayer tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Acts 25, there is a new sheriff in town. Felix has left, and here comes Festus. So I guess you couldn't be governor uh, in this part of the world unless your name started with an F. <laughs> but here is Festus. Beginning of verse 1, Acts 25. Three days after Festus arrived in the province, he went up to Jerusalem from Caesarea. The chief priests and the leaders of the Jews presented their case against Paul to him, and they appealed. Now what's happened is this new government official, governor of Caesarea, uh, went up. We're talking about 50 miles or so, 53 miles, I suppose, as the crow flies. And he meets with them before he meets with Paul. And he gets an earful, and they falsify charges 
They talk about uh, how despicable Paul is, how he's causing trouble around the world, and how he desecrated the temple. And none of those claims would hold water. They were just accusing him falsely. But he goes to them first, and are they ever bending his ear? Now, remember, Festus is a Roman official. He wants peace in the province, and he's about to be asked to do them a favor. Notice what is asked of him. Asking for a favor against Paul, that Festus summon him to Jerusalem. They wanted Festus, the governor, new guy, bring Paul with you, bring him back to Jerusalem because they wanted to adjudicate him fairly, correct? They wanted to make sure that all the facts came out and they would not rush to judgment. No, that's not correct. And you say, Pastor, I know it's not because I read ahead. Notice what they were planning to do. They were, in fact, preparing an ambush along the road to kill him. Whew. In this world, if you live for Jesus, you're going to have enemies. You're going to have people that don't like you. You're going to have people that will mock your faith and belief in a man impaled on a cross 2,000 years ago who you claim rose from the dead. Now, we as believers know that the Lord Jesus Christ is our everything, right? I mean, he really is. He is the bright and morning star. He's the Alpha and the Omega. He's the wonderful counselor. He's the Prince of Peace. He's the Rose of Sharon. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Or like it says in the Living Bible, Laura, he's the A to the Z. He is the creator, God. By him, all things consist. He is the exact representation of the invisible God. God was pleased that the, the, the deity dwelled in him in bodily form. Read all of that in the book of Colossians, which would be a great sermon series. I think I've done before, but man, the book of Colossians is the most uh, Christ-centered book Paul ever wrote. He brings out his deity and his grandeur and his being fully God. Well, what am I saying? I'm preaching to my friends, to my wife, who you and I would not trade anything for our journey, would we, hon? There is nothing like knowing God in Christ and being filled with the Holy Spirit. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Remember we used to sing, I've got the joy, 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 joy. Where? She's not, <laughs> down in my heart. She's reluctant to sing. Down in my heart. Down in my heart to stay. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart. Down in my heart. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart. Paul did too. Paul knew him in a personal way. And he knew, will know when Festus returns, that this is a plot to end my life based on trumped up, falsified charges that were not true. And we read about it. Festus, however, answered that Paul should be kept at Caesarea. You know what I think with all my heart? It wasn't Festus that answered. It was, it was God Almighty who made that Roman respond in a way that would protect his apostle because God had promised in his son to Paul 20, 25 years before, you will testify before me in front of kings and the elite of the Roman world. You will actually go to Rome. So you know what? You're not going to get to Rome if you have to go back to, Cess or back to Jerusalem. He's not going to let him go back. That took a lot of courage, I think, for Festus to say no to that favor-acting group in Jerusalem. And he said, I'm about to go there shortly myself, meaning Felix is on, or Festus, I should say, is on his way to Caesarea. Therefore, he said, let those of you who have authority go down with me and accuse him if he has done anything wrong. There's, there's a, quite a statement there. He says, if he has done anything wrong, I have to believe that he was already briefed maybe by his predecessor, Felix, on the accusations and somehow had been aware of Paul's riveting testimony that it was uh, not true, that he did not do what they said. Because he makes that statement, if he's done anything wrong, verse 6, when he had spent of uh, Acts 25, 
When he had spent not more than eight or ten days among them, he went down to Caesarea. Isn't that interesting? He stayed in Jerusalem eight to ten days. Luke's the author of Acts. That's a long time for them to try to coerce and pressure and force and bribe and to be conniving. Remember, the weapons formed against you will not prosper. There are people that are not sympathetic to your walk with God. And just remember that if God be for you, who can be against you? You and the Lord are a majority. Uh, just remember Daniel and the lion's den. Um, it looked pretty hopeless, but his hope was in God. That's where ours has to be when we find ourselves being falsely uh, accused. <clears throat> and so um, what happens here is uh, the next day, this is the next day after leaving Jerusalem, seated at the tribunal, he commanded Paul to be brought in. So picture Paul walking in, in chains. Remember, uh, Felix is gone. Festus is in his seat. And Felix, wanting to do a favor for the Jews, left Paul in prison for two years, probably by the time Festus arrives. Paul has been in prison for some time. And so let's see what happens when he gets there. When he arrived, the Jews who had come down from Jerusalem stood around him and brought many serious charges that they were not able to prove. Their accusations were groundless. Then Paul made his defense. This is when you could have heard a pin drop in that place. Neither against the Jewish law, nor against the temple, nor against Caesar have I sinned in any way. It's a quite an opening statement. But Festus, wanting to do the Jews a favor, replied to Paul, Are you willing? So those eight to ten days in Jerusalem had probably taken their toll on Festus. Are you willing to go up to Jerusalem to be tried before me there on these charges? All of a sudden, the Jewish men who had come from Jerusalem to Caesarea, 53 miles about, are breathing new life and they're invigorated. This man who would not initially bring Paul to us in Jerusalem is now asking Paul if he will go to Jerusalem. Our plan to end his life somewhere on that stretch of road is now coming back into focus. Not so fast. The Bible says emphatically the steps of a good man or a good woman are directed by the Lord and he delights in their way. We don't have to be afraid if we're walking with the Lord. He knows how to protect us from harm. He knows how to redirect our steps. I told Laura of, uh, of a famous train accident in France where a minister was about to get on the train and he said he felt as if his feet were riveted to the platform. He couldn't get on the train. And somewhere down the tracks was a sad, tragic accident where the train left the tracks and everybody on board died. But that pastor couldn't get on the train. Folks, inevitably in this life, there will be earthquakes. In fact, did you know there was one just... Uh, I think west of San Jose, California, 5.1 in the Richter scale. Hurricanes, just like we just had in Florida, that devastated the Gulf Coast. Uh, and we were just in Naples and the Fort Myers area. We flew out of Fort Myers that has been absolutely decimated. Pastor friend of mine, pastors in Naples, Florida, he said it looks like a bomb went off up there. It's just so sad. We can't escape Accidents, tornadoes, but listen to me. <clears throat> Until my race is run, your race is run, and our time here on earth is done, we are not going to leave this earth one minute earlier or one minute later than we're supposed to. God has written down our times, 
and he knows where we're going to go in this life. Paul is asked, and it must have surprised him, because word had reached the jail that uh, they're trying to coerce the new governor, Festus, to, to uh, have me tried down in Jerusalem. And he thinks, because probably the last thing he'd heard before this, is no, he's not. He, he stood up against them. He must have some real hope. But his hope isn't in this earthly governor. It's in the Lord. Paul replied. Here's how he replied to that. I am standing at Caesar's tribunal. Brunel. Basically, tribunal is an official political office that Festus held. And he was able to... We're okay. Laura's hearing a phone ring, but it's out in the hallway. Don't worry about it, honey. But he's saying, no, 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 Festus, you have the authority to represent Caesar. I don't need to go to Jerusalem. I can be judged right here with you. That's what he says to him. Paul replied, I'm standing at Caesar's tribunal where I ought to be tried. I've done nothing wrong to the Jews as even you yourself know very well, which would, by inference, indicate to me that Paul and... Festus had had some conversations. Festus had examined him, I have no doubt, privately. He certainly had read up about his case <clears throat> from the notes that uh, his predecessor, Felix, had left behind. And he makes the statement, you know very well. And so you can judge me. I don't have to go somewhere else. And so if then I did anything wrong and am deserving of death... That's then you can judge me if I've done anything wrong. Just you do it. Don't try to pass the buck, right? I am not trying to escape death, Paul writes, but if there's nothing to what these men accuse me of, no one can give me up to them. I appeal to Caesar. That was a big deal. When he said that, it, it uh, kind of let Festus off the hook. And it made the Jews, I promise you, shrink back in stunned silence that Paul is saying, I, I am not going to be adjudicated by you, Festus, and I'm not going back to Jerusalem because these people are unsavory. They've lied about me, and you know they have, and they're going to take my life. He had to know that. So I'm going to go to Rome. I'm going to appeal to Caesar. Here's what happens after that. Then after Festus conferred with his counsel, he replied, you have appealed to Caesar. To Caesar you will go. We'll pick up on that next week. Paul will have an encounter with a king and his wife in the remaining part of the chapter. And he is heading ultimately to Rome where he will face Nero who was a despicable Caesar. And we know the rest of the story. Paul's going to be condemned to death. But not until he's had a chance to tell the highest courts in Rome of a risen Christ who transformed his life. I don't know how your life will conclude, or mine for that matter, but I pray wherever God puts us and wherever he sends us that we'll be faithful to declare the wonderful works of God and be a true testimony no matter the cost. Paul did. And in God's Son, we can too. Great to have you tonight. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for Paul's courage. He must have felt abandoned in some ways, and yet he wasn't. You were with him. You strengthened him. And your promise, which he echoed way back in the 14th chapter of Acts, is by many trials we must enter the kingdom of God. I pray for those tonight who are feeling the weight of illness or advanced age or weariness of some kind or sorrow or sadness or an unwelcomed prognosis, and I pray for them, that through these difficult times, they will look up and find their solace and hope in you. Thank you, Lord, that 
we can feel lonely, but because of Jesus, we're never alone. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Pastor Mark Hensley here in my office with Laura, having been grateful for our time together in the book of Acts, chapter 25. Next week, we'll be back in the same chapter, picking up in verse 13. Paul before King Agrippa, Bernice, and Festus. Have a great evening, folks. Hope to see you Sunday. You got to come. Aren't you curious what the, the mystery meal is going to be? I am. I hope to see you there. We'll find out together. Have a good night. Thank you.